It was about a year ago that I covered season three of a game called The Cycle, which at the time was quite a big update. It added the prospect station, changed up a lot of the weapon handling, and even added a moving objective in the form of a train. With the latest closed test update called Frontier, the game has started to shift massively in direction and I think it's for the better. The game is kind of blowing up on Twitch at the moment and hopefully in this video I'll explain why. So when I last covered the game, the basic premise was that you dropped into the world in pods and your goal on your own or in a trio was to complete objectives to earn victory points. Those objectives could be to extract minerals, capture uplinks, or even eliminate rival players. There was also AI to fight against too, and storms, and then you had to extract, and in an ideal world, you'd be the person or team with the highest score. Although, it wasn't necessary to finish first. So the ending could sometimes feel a bit anticlimactic. Now, it was a battle royale of sorts, but at the time, I compared it more to something like Hunt Showdown. It seems though that with this complete change of the game, the developers have now leaned further into that ethos and if anything the game is more like Tarkov now compared to where it was a year ago. I do want to caveat that though with a few things. When I say it's like Tarkov, I really mean the core ethos of the game. This is not a hardcore tactical shooter like Tarkov is and it's certainly not as in-depth as that game. The comparison is more towards the general gameplay loop. You take gear in, you try to complete objectives and then evacuate with valuable cargo. Die and you'll lose everything that you took in with you and hopefully you've got enough stashed away to re-gear up. Before you load into any game though, you need to select the inventory that you want to take in with you. This includes your backpack, armor, primary and secondary weapons and ammo. You'll also want to decide if you take utility items such as medical stims or med packs. You can also choose what attachments to take in on your gun with varying options available for purchase at the store. Don't overlook these either because attachments make the recall on weapons a lot more manageable and depending on the weapon you're going to need them. A scope for example massively helps as well and you'll start with pretty basic weapons but you can unlock better and more unique versions when you complete faction quests inside the game. More on that in just a bit. The most important thing to remember though is that the cycle is a risk reward game. It's about weighing up your options. When you're back at the prospect station you've got a stash of items and that's safe no matter what happens in a game. Whatever you take in with you though is up for grabs if you don't make it back grind to unlock and buy that unique assault rifle, take it into a match and then die, it's gone, along with the ammo and all the items you had in your possession at the time. There is insurance available though, which you can choose to pay before you head into the wild, but this gives you a monetary value that you will get back if you die, just so you can buy some stuff back. The goal of the game is to get in, stock up, complete quests, which then in turn allow you to get better items, and then head back down to the surface again, and the cycle continues, pun obviously intended. What's more is that there are currently two different maps that you can play on, each with their own difficulty level. Bright Sands is normal difficulty, while Crescent Falls is listed as hard. I played around on it, and even just the terrain itself felt like more of a challenge. More wildlife and it's definitely not as easy to avoid them. Some of the wildlife are pretty scary too, some big alien monsters here. Now each map has its own feel as well as a slightly different biome of the planet Fortuna 3. Other enemy players are one thing to contend with but the wildlife as I mentioned is no joke. The striders are pretty easy to take down for example but if you get caused out by a spitter you could lose a lot of health especially early on. There are also much bigger enemy types out there that you perhaps don't want to be taking on solo. Enemy players can see your dropship too, and in fact in one game I landed, I went forward for 20 seconds to just do a bit of looting and instantly got shot in the back. And it reminded me that if you're playing this game now, you've got to be on guard all of the time. Speaking of which, you can go into a game on your own if you choose, or you can squad up. What you need to remember though, is that if you play solo, there's a good chance that you could come up against a squad of say two enemy players. It's worth thinking about that when you prepare your loadout heading in. If you want to find a few items that you need for a quest, you may want to not risk taking in anything that you're not willing to lose. If you need to be taking out some big wildlife though, then you're definitely going to need a rifle with plenty of ammo. Ammo does take up space in your backpack though, everything does. If you want to ensure that you survive by taking in plenty of medical supplies and ammo, that's fine. But early on, without any backpack upgrades, it may mean that you won't have all that much space to carry the items that you find. Now, because the cycle is a PvE and PvP game, 
You've also got to think about when you decide to go guns blazing against the AI wildlife. If you want to stay under the radar, it's probably not the best to start shooting as soon as you land because other players may be alerted to your position. I mentioned factions earlier too, and they play a big part in helping you upgrade your gear. There are three currently in the game, Korolev, Osiris and ICA, and when you're at the station, you can head over to each one for a quest. It could be something simple like kill five creatures with a pistol, or something more challenging that will require a bit more searching like delivering four scrap metal. Completing quests will not only earn you the main in-game currency called K marks that can be used to purchase items, but it will also improve your standing with that particular faction and in turn that will allow you to get better gear from them. There's also a crafting system that allows you to craft epic and even legendary items but they aren't cheap. The legendary Karma Sniper Rifle, for example, costs 1.1 million K marks, as well as lots of other items that you need to scavenge. There are more reasonable items though, like larger backpacks, better shields, and medical items. You can repair your armor here too. You have a player quarters on the station too, and that plays an important role, because here you can upgrade your crafting items, and more importantly, inventory items as your stash and save pockets, to name just a few. Save pockets are part of your character that isn't lost if you die but the space on these is incredibly small to start with. It just means that you can take an item into the world and guarantee that you won't lose it. And there are places in the world that are locked, so much like Tarkov, you may find a key or access for one place, extract with it, and then head to that place on another run. Tons of replayability here. Just like crafting items, you're going to need to grab quite a few things from the world to be able to upgrade any of the paths. Now, wrapping things up, since the game has changed, I haven't put as many hours into it as others have. And because of that, I wasn't really as bothered about losing my inventory. But that changes the more that you take in and the more that you play. The more you earn, the more you have to lose, as they say. I also think that avoiding fights is a viable tactic, especially when it comes to other players. The most important thing, though, is to evacuate. So how do you do that? Well, when you drop onto the planet, you'll have two exfil points noted on your map and you have to head to either one of those and call in a ship. Anyone else around can see the ship and so if someone is close to you, you could be in for a nasty fight. It does take a little bit of time to come in and land but once it does, you can get on board. This isn't a system whereby all you have to do is touch the ship and you're good though. Oh no, you've got to wait on board until it's ready to take off. It doesn't take long but it can be a tense time as there's still a risk of being killed, there could be players and AI around, but eventually it will tell you that you were successful and you can start planning your next mission. Honestly, there's a lot to like about the cycle now. They've completely changed it. It is free to play or free to access at the moment on Steam. I do believe it's on the Epic Game Store as well. And if you enjoy the gameplay loops of other games like Tarkov or even Hunt Showdown, then I imagine that this would be something you would enjoy. I do think it takes time to get into though. It's not as accessible as it was before, but that's okay. And I think it will attract a much more different, dedicated audience now and definitely grow in size. In my time playing so far, I've encountered a lot of players who were way better geared than I was but I think that's the nature of the game you have to take your time early on to gear up and eventually you will become the hunter rather than the hunted so that's all do let me know your thoughts on this down in the comments below I wanted to do a vid on this because I think it's quite interesting how they've pivoted the game these kind of Tarkov-esque hunt showdown shooters are becoming the new popular trends PvE PvP all rolled into one with a bit of risk and narrative I feel like there's much more of this to come if you enjoyed the video, leave a like. If you didn't, a dislike. Subscribe for more and I'll see you in the next one.